cold autumn evening in Ireland. Black clouds loom and mingle with the smoke and the earthy smell of a turf fire. You make your way through sodden grass to reach the turf shed. And as you lift the first sod, the devil appears. The devil's coach horse beetle was said in Irish folklore to have been the traitor that gave away Christ's whereabouts when the soldiers came looking to crucify him. Because of this, the beetle is said to have been cursed with the seven deadly sins. The lore also tells us that if you manage to put your boot to him before he lifts his tail, you should put this same curse on him again, and so you yourself will be absolved of these deadly sins. Fans of Irish literature may also recognise the creature's Irish name, Darragadil, from Podrick Pierce's play, where a priest condemns a woman to be publicly shunned as the vilest of creatures, much as one would have treated this Darragadil. As you can see, with its tail raised, the devil's coach horse looks a bit like a scorpion. And like a scorpion, it has front pincers, which can deal a very nasty bite to anyone who encounters them. Unlike a scorpion, it cannot sting with its tail, but it can emit a foul-scented mist from it as one of its many impressive defense tactics. You can see why meeting one of these bad boys of a dark night in the turf pile was an experience you'd rather avoid. But what exactly is the role of the Darragadil in Irish folklore? How deep does the superstition run? And did we really associate it with the devil? Well, a lot can be learned about Irish opinions on things by looking at the Irish name for it. And Darug is usually the Irish word for the colour red, which the beetle obviously isn't, so I had to look a wee bit deeper than that. And here's my hot take on what it actually means. Changlan.ie was a big help here and I highly recommend it for anyone trying to learn the Kupla Fuckle. Changlan told me that Ton Deal Darug Air means he's a real devil or a real torment. Like he has a bee in his bonnet, but on steroids. So Jarug and the word deal together, in my opinion, is just a way of saying this bug is a particularly massive bollocks. Give him a wide berth. Now, having said that, I don't think this particular turn of phrase was a total coincidence either. It might be a sort of triple entendre, like this bug is an asshole. He'll also put up a fight. Oh, and in case you've any guilt about squishing him immediately on sight, remember he squealed on Christ and you should not only squish him, but curse him whilst you're at it. But in all the things those meanings describe, for us, not once is Beelzebub actually mentioned. And in fact, there is a tale from the early 20th century in Ireland, Dualaka in County Mayo to be exact, which features the Pope telling a wayward priest to kiss the first creature he meets as he goes out the door. Of course, it's a Darragadil and it latches onto your man's face and doesn't let go until he's eaten them all up and there's only bones left. And then the Pope says, well, now that he's been punished, I'm going to damn him to hell anyway. It's like a fucking 60s B movie over here. And actually, there was a B movie made about a giant man-eating devil's coach horse, but that's a different story. So actually, as well as calling bullshit on Dargadil, meaning the devil's beetle, I'm going to go out on a further limb and say, this little devil has got a bad rap. There, I said it. Here we are swinging boots at them left, right and centre and the poor thing's just trying to get on with minding the pupae, feeding the pupae, probably, I don't know, whatever it is badass bugs get up to when we're not trying to kill them. Now, having said all that, when I first met this insect just a couple of months ago, it was literally at eye level with me, a mere couple of inches from my face on the door frame of the cottage, which apparently is quite a common place to find them since they are a roving beetle and will probably make their way to your door at some point 
if you live in rural Ireland. I froze when I saw the size of it and the way it was surveying me and that was before I knew anything about its tail or its olfactory defense systems. A minor heart attack and a quick google later I found its name Asgeelga and in English and then had another minor heart attack. And then after that I googled some more and discovered that Ondaragadil is actually an important part of the Irish ecosystem that dwells in damp places such as peatlands, log, turf and compost piles, in moss and leaf litter and under stones. They're powerful predators and they feed on worms, slugs, caterpillars, spiders, wood lice and and other invertebrates so actually they make a really beneficial guest to any garden just maybe watch yourself when you go out for the basket of logs in the dark yeah by the way if you do get a bite from one the Duke of Schools collection tells us that the cure for it is to rub a dead darragadil on top of it there! Problem solved and not gross at all. Nope, not a bit. Let me know your experiences with the Daragadil or the devil's coach horse for an assassiny amongst us. Drop it in the comments below. I kind of want to know what it smells like when it ejaculates. Not from first-hand experience, obviously. I want someone else to tell me. And if you are also a little bit nerdy about the Irish ecosystem and the folklore and magical practices associated with it, you might be interested in my latest online class. Check it out. Hair Magic at Seven is an online class by myself, Tara Tyne, and hosted by the Irish Pagan School. It's a concise and entertaining exploration for those of you who want to learn the kind of herbs and food species that our Irish ancestors would have worked with at this time of year, and the sorts of practices, both magical and practical that would have been happening as summer came to a close and the darkness and uncertainty of winter loomed. Covering everything from the real origins of the jack-o'-lantern through medieval magic and games to the colonial influence on Irish Samhain practices and vice versa. This course is an absolute bargain for only 45 euro. It's also suitable for total beginners. So don't worry if you're new to Irish witchcraft or Irish farming for that matter. Head on over to the Irish Pagan School to get more information and to book your place. See you there. Right, so that's it for this one. As you can see, I am once again neglecting Dituween this year because massive life changes and burnout pack a hell of a punch when they get going. I'm also having to drop back from weekly posting for the same reasons until I find content that is quicker and less time intensive to produce. That's just how it's going to be. But do stay tuned because we'll talk about that soon. I might even do a live video because it probably would work better as an interactive thing. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. Anyway, enough yammering. Big love to anyone who's still watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. It really helps the channel out and helps me to keep making content and having witchy adventures, which you're not gonna wanna miss. Slaw Nagas Banacht. Goodbye and good luck to you.